backwards from rectangular to parametric. Um, and then we're going to talk, this, this first example is kind of long and extensive. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, comparing some curves and some similarities and differences in them. Uh, they should be fairly quick. All right, we're gonna. Do you guys have your calculators? Because let's use our calculators to help us out, since we use that. We have those to gr help us graph. Okay. All right. So, yesterday. Oh, we have the definition of a smooth curve. Is that at the top of your notes? Yeah. I've okay. So a curve C is represented by our two parametric equation. It's called smooth if the derivatives are continuous and not simultaneously zero except possibly at the endpoints the curve c is called piecewise smooth if it is smooth on each subinterval of some portion i okay basically we're going to look at to see if it would be something if the picture looks like something that's going to be differentiable we would say it's a smooth curve okay all right let me get back to come on there it is it zooms out. okay so we're going to look at, notice it's broken into four parts, right? Or three parts? Four parts. What? Look at your notes. Are there three parts to one or four parts to one? There's four. There's four. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to do each one of these things, each one of these uh, sets of equations. We're going to find the rectangular equation and we're going to graph it and look at the orientations, okay? And then decide if the cu curves are smooth or not, okay? Um, so I'm going to start by, let's start by getting it into the rectangular form, okay? And then we will go ahead and put it into the calculator parametrically, okay? All right, so um, I'm going to start by getting, I'm going to use the same thing we did on that last homework problem. Since it's in trig and I know what sine squared plus cosine squared equals, I'm going to use that technique on this one. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2, right? So I'd have that this one is cosine theta equals x over 2. And then this one I'm going to divide by 2, so this one would be that sine of theta equals y over 2. So all I'm doing is I'm writing the rectangular equation like we learned yesterday. All right. Then I know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals what? 1. one. So I'm going, that's going to allow me to substitute these in. So I have x over 2 squared plus y over 2 squared equals 1. No. Did I, I wrote it backwards, didn't I? Um, Sorry. I put my cosine first and my sine second, but it's the same thing. It doesn't matter, right? No, it doesn't. All right. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this a little bit more so that this pops out a little bit more at the end. So I've got, I, if I squared those, I'd have x squared over 4 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. And then I'm going to get the 4 out of the denominator by multiplying everything by 4. So I'd really get x squared plus y squared equals 4. Okay, let's use our calculators. I don't have mine up and running yet, but you guys can start getting it. Put in these parametrically, though. So if you weren't here yesterday, you're going to have to ask your neighbor how you get it into your calculator parametrically. Okay. I'll do it, too, but it's going to take me a minute. It's 2 sine t, right? It's yeah, yeah. Two, sorry, 2 cosine t, 2 sine t. Okay, once you've got a graph, figure out the orientation. So trace it and figure out which way it's going. Okay. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna put it in if you need to watch. So I'm gonna go to menu, graph edit entry, parametric, and it was two cosine, and instead of using theta, we're gonna use t. And then two sine t, two trig sine t. And hit enter. And it looks like a circle, right? What I need to do now is I need to decide if it's going clockwise or counterclockwise, because remember, drawing the orientation on our graph is part of it. So I'm going to go to menu, trace, graph trace, and I want to start as close to zero as I can get. All right, so I'm, I'm at zero, so I'm trying to decide what direction the graph is going around the circle. So it looks like it's going in the counterclockwise direction. Do we all agree with that? So go ahead and sketch that picture with the orientation. It just means that that's the direction it's going. Yep, sketch it. So make sure you sketch it, okay? All right, so that's all I'm gonna do at this point for 1A, okay? Because we're gonna come back and we're gonna do that same thing for all four of them, and then we're gonna come back and, co and answer the question and compare them, okay? All right, so let's practice again. We're practicing our rectangular again. It's uglier this time, all right? Um, I need to try to solve that. Um, sh I'm gonna get this one. I can get. I know I could get t by itself over here, couldn't I? So if I multiplied by t and I divide by y, don't I get that t is one over y? So I'm gonna sub into this one here with that t, and that'll get me my rectangular equation. So x equals plus or minus the square root of four times one over y squared minus one over the absolute value of one over y. Oops, sorry, was it y? No, it was just y, not y squared. <coughs> All right, that equation looks pretty ugly. So I'm gonna do some algebra to see if I can make it simpler, okay? So let's start by getting rid of the square root. How do we get rid of that square root? Yeah, if we square both sides, don't I get rid of the square root and the absolute value for that matter? So we get that x squared equals 4 times 1 over y squared minus 1, but that's also going to square this denominator to 1 over y squared. All right, I'm going to do fancy algebra. You ready for that? Okay. It's not going to be that crazy. Okay, it's going to make sense. All right. All right, I'm going to switch that squared to being just on the y in the denominator. It's the same thing as squaring it the way we did. All right, in order to get this out of the denominator, don't I multiply by the reciprocal? Yeah. So we've got 4 times 1 over, I'm going to switch it to 1 over y squared. Um, in fact, couldn't I put the 4 on top of that, make it simpler? So let's do that. I'm going to square this individually, so it would be 1 over y, y squared, and then I'm going to multiply it by 4, so it would really be 4 over y squared minus 1. And then I'm flipping the denominator on this one up, so I've got times y squared. What could I do with this? Distribute y squared. Distribute y squared. So x squared equals, what happens with this y squared and that y squared when I distribute? Cancel. So I just get 4, and then I distribute the y squared across the 1, and I get minus y squared. Y squared. Couldn't I take this and bring it over to the other side? Uh, yeah. Yep, so let's do that. So x squared plus y squared equals 4. That looks kind of familiar. Isn't that the same thing we got in answer A? Whoa. Yeah, it's the same rectangular equation, but we had very, very different parametric equations. Okay? You're going to see. 
Okay, so now I want you to, we're going to put this into the same thing into our calculator parametrically. Okay, so let's put that in parametrically and see what happens. We have to, we're supposed to look, examine, because look at the question. It says, determine the difference between the curves. Are the graphs the same? Are the orientations the same? Are the curves, curves the smooth? Okay, so we're trying to look at similarities and differences. Okay? All right, so I'm going to go back to my graph. I'm going to do a doc B and get rid of it. Okay, and let's see what we can do with getting this in. So we're going to go to my, I want to go parametric, so menu, graph, edit, entry, and I'm going to go parametric. How do you make plus and minus? Uh, that's what we're going to figure out. I think it is, do they let us do that even? Is it on there anywhere? I think it is on there somewhere. No, nope, not there. Let's try the button next to the book. Is there a plus minus there? No. What about the book? Oh, there it is. Probably highlighted from last year. All right, if you hit the book button, there's your plus minus. Let's see if that helps us. I'm not sure it will. All right, and then I'm going to hit a control divide. My plus minus stayed on top, but that's fine. And then we need a square root. The plus minus the book. You see the book? You have to be on the third tab. And then it is in the one, two, three. It's underneath the underscore. Third one down. Where's absolute value? Okay, I'll show you absolute value in a second. I'm getting the. Okay. So now I've got plus minus, I gotta hit my square root. So control square root of four t squared minus one. So four t squared minus one. All right, and then we've gotta do the absolute value. The absolute value is in the button next to the book. And it is this for in the first row or our first column in the middle. Everybody. Right here, look where I'm at. In the button next to the book, I hit this button here. Okay. And then in that first column, it's this blue one that's highlighted. That doesn't work for me. And then T. That's the second row down, right? Yep, second row down. I'll highlight it again. It's the second row down. Wait, why is it oh, yeah. Because we're in terms of T. WTF. Okay, and then we just have to do the other one was 1 over t, right? So yeah. control divide, that one's easy, hopefully. 1 <laughs> over t. And hit enter. It might be, it might not like the, Whoa. yeah, it doesn't like the plus minus. So get rid of the plus minus. Let's just go with the plus. Whoa. If we go with the plus, it'll get, well, we can get to the minus probably. Yeah. So what would happen if I took this whole thing? I'm going to try to do the minus. Let's see what happens to get the minus. Um, and I do another equation, but I do negative in front. And then do 1 over t. <coughs> you, do, you have copy and paste on yours, too. Uh -oh. Highlight it, hit control C and control V. Oh, okay. It'll work. Like a computer. Just like a computer. <laughs> All right. All right. Do you see what happened? So it looks like I I'm actually keep going. So do you see what I did? I went I did the positive one there. And then I did the negative one. So I had to graph it separately because it didn't like the plus minus. How do you get the other what graph? The the which way How do I get the other graph? So I did I put a negative and I copied and pasted. The other thing we could do is probably do a negative. Let's see. Let's try this. Do a negative sign and then do var and pick x1 of t. And that should get it for you too. So you don't have to even copy and paste. Probably. All right. Then I'm going to do a menu, trace, graph, trace. Oops, where's my graph? I would probably need to tell it what graph to use. Maybe not. Oh, there it goes. So I'm at zero, or as close to zero as I can get. Oh, it didn't like it at. Keeps going. Where's zero? Oh, so it looks like it's coming in from the inside, doesn't it? Does it let me go to, does it let me click on the red one? Oh, there's the red one. Let's see if it'll let me graph trace that one. Oops. 
I don't know what I did there. I hit a button a whole bunch of times. Okay, let's see if it'll let me menu, trace, graph, trace. Does it let me get, nope, nope. I don't know how to graph trace the other one, apparently. Anybody get the red one to trace? Oh, wait, see, trace all. What does that do? I Apparently, and nothing that I can figure out. Oh, wait, trace all, cursor, left, right, move along the graphs, enter the number to jump to that independent value. Tracing, I don't know what's going on. There's a thing moving across. That didn't help. Let's try zero. I didn't like that either. So we're not using graph trace like we really should. Okay, so at least we have a picture, right? And we knew the blue one was going, it looks like, in the clockwise direction. So let's sketch our picture of that. Okay. All right, so I've got my picture sketched, and I know that when I did my blue trace, at least I know it's going in the um, clockwise direction. So I'd put my little orientation on there. Yeah. Clockwise. Okay. All right. We still aren't ready to compare, though, because we've got two more to do, right? Wait, did we just draw the half circle? Yep, you just draw the half circle. Because the domain restriction was different, right? Because we had a different set of parametric equations to begin with. Parametric equation means we've got we've got two different equations and we're adding the third variable for time. All right, let's try this one. So let's try to get it into rectangular. I need to solve for t. So which one is probably easier to solve for t in? The x or the y? The x is easier, so I'm going to square both sides to get x squared equals t. And to get it rectangular, I'm going to take this x squared and plop it in for t in the other equation. What does that mean, rectangular? Rectangular means you're, getting, you're taking the t out of it. So we're, we're taking the, um, the par parameter of t out. What's the point of that? What's the point of that? To get it into something that we normally graph versus the parametric graph. Okay. So how do I... That still, it doesn't look like we normally would see it, right? How would I get rid of that square root? You square both sides. Okay, so we've got y squared equals 4 minus x squared. Couldn't I move that x squared to the other side? And what do you notice? Isn't it the same equation again? It's the exact same equation. But, did, but the, yeah, we've, we've done this. We've gotten the same rectangular equation by doing different parametric equations. Okay, it is kind of crazy. All right, let's graph those two now parametrically. Okay, so we're going to do the par parametric graph of those two equations. So what's the point of finding the rectangle? You're going to see in a minute. Okay, so you've got to bear with me, all right? Because you will have to convert back and forth. Okay, so we're practicing on doing a lot of those conversions right now. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go menu. I'm going to go graph, edit, entry, parametric. All right, and then I need to do the square root of t. So control square root of t. And then I've got to do square root of 4 minus t. 4 minus t. And we're going to hit enter. And this one didn't have the plus minus on it, so it is only that quarter circle. I need to figure out the orientation because that's one of the things it wants me to compare. So how do we do the orientation? It says menu, trace, trace. Graph, trace. And make sure that this is this time element is as close to zero. So it's close to zero right now, right? Wait, yeah. why do you want it to be at zero? Because that's where it starts, right? If I looked at my step here, notice it starts at zero. My t starts at zero. Okay. Okay? All right, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to escape out of that. I'm going to trace it again. Some menu trace graph trace so is it tracing clockwise or counterclockwise clockwise. clockwise all right so i'm going to sketch that picture too so sketch that put the orientation on it
Okay. All right. And we're going to put that orientation mark on it. All right, one more. Well, we've got one more that if, before I can answer the question, right? Because this was all example one. This was example one, part A, B, C, and D. Okay? And then we're going to talk about the differences between the curves. Okay? Um, so, let's go ahead and try to get that rectangular. How would I solve, or what would I solve for on that one? What would easily get me T by itself? The bottom one. Okay, what would I have to do to the bottom one to get t by itself? If we took the natural log of both sides, good job, we would get t by itself. So we get natural log of y equals t. I'm going to take that and I'm going to substitute it in for t in the top equation, in my x equation. And I'm going to try to get it rectangular. So x equals negative square root of 4 minus e to the 2 times the natural log of t. Okay, remember with logs, I'm allowed to take that and make it an exponent, right? Yeah. So you've got x equals negative square root of 4 minus e to the natural log of t squared. Sorry, it shouldn't be t squared, should it? It should be y. That's my fault. Y, not t. All right, what happens with e and natural log? They cancel. So you got x equals negative square root of 4 minus y squared. That's looking familiar. Is the exponent on the y or the natural log? The y. All right. How do I undo the square root? Square both sides. So you get, and that takes care of your negative as well. So 4 minus y squared. I get y to the other side by adding it. So what do you notice about the equation? It's exactly the, it's same, exactly the same again. Wait, what about the, negative out? the negative out in front, when I square this, it goes away. Because it's negative 1 squared. All right, let's go ahead and graph, these, the graph this one and this one. Okay, so use your, do your parametric graph one more time. All right, so I'm going to do a doc B. All right, and we're going to do menu, graph edit entry, parametric. And we had negative square root of 4 minus e to the 2t. So 4 minus e to the 2t. And then I'm going to have the other one was e to the t. Okay. And I'm going to hit enter. It isn't even a whole quarter circle, is it? It's just a little chunk. I don't know. Very carefully. I could zoom in a little there. I zoomed in a little. All right. So menu, and I'm going to trace it, make sure I know my orientation. My t is pretty close to 0 there. If I wanted to back it up to 0, it would be the, oh boy, that was bad. All right, there's 0, so I'm graphing it. It looks like it's going clockwise again, right? I don't know. Let's try to, there it is. All right, so let's put that in there. Okay, so looking at my orientation, it would go like that. So now let's go ahead and talk about the similarities and differences of the curves, okay? Because that's what we're supposed to, we were supposed to do to answer the question. So to determine any differences between the curves, what's the big difference? Um, the yeah, did they all go around the full circle? No, so their domain looks like it's a little bit different, right? Yeah. And that's probably the nature of, look, I couldn't put 0 in the denominator on example B, on B right? Um, this one probably has some restrictions of where the thing is positive, or where it keeps it positive under the radical, okay? And same thing with this one, keeps it with the positive under the radical, you can put some domain restrictions on it, okay? 
So one of the differences would be that there are um, there's do domain restrictions. Are different. Okay. What do what was the biggest thing that was exactly the same about them? X squared plus y squared. Yeah, it had the same rectangular equation, right? Same rectangular equation. Did that say domain? Domain restrictions are different. Okay. Um, were they all smooth curves? The smooth curve just did, we're, would we have been able to take the derivative on that interval? Yep. Yeah, we would have been able to. So they were all smooth curves. Okay. And then the last thing was is how they wanted us to compare the orientations. Were the orientations the same on all of them? Which way it was going? Yeah, which way was it going on all of them? Um, it was going different. The first one, it was going counterclockwise. Yeah, they're different. They're going Okay, so the first one was counterclockwise. So A was counterclockwise. But the other three were the same, right? Um, B, C, and D were clockwise. So again, they want, the whole point of that problem was they wanted us to see that you get the same rectangular equation, but because of domain restrictions and orientation, it, it cha the parametrics can be different, even though the rectangulars are the same. Okay. Domain restrictions, the uh, the, the values that are true, where where the equation is true, right? For x, well, for your independent variable. All right. Let's look at example two. So, this one's really short. Okay. Yeah, only two examples. This one's really short. So th what they want us to do here is they want us to re write two different parametric equations for the rectangular equation. And we know that there could be, there could be lots, right? There, we just saw an example that had four different parametric equations for the rectangular equation, okay? So here's one easy way to do this, okay? This is kind of cheating. So I need an x equation and a y equation. Remember, I have to substitute t in. And basically what I need to do is I need to have t solved for and be able to plug into the other. So if I made x equal to t, couldn't I make my other one 5t plus 2? So I would be taking that x and subbing it in, and that would get me the rectangular one? OK, that's one way I could do it. Yes. All right. <laughs> Tell them I don't hate calculus. <laughs> I was going to say, I do. Yeah, he does. I, that's probably what he'll say. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do to find the, uh, another one. I'm going to do two more just so you get an, ex an idea behind this. So that was a pretty easy one. That was kind of cheating. Okay? Let's say that I pick x and I say x is t plus 3. Basically, what I want to do is I want to take this one, pretend that there's a t there, and sub in for it, right? So I'm going to do. Five, and I'm going to instead of subbing in for the for the t, I'm subbing in for the x. I'm going to sub in the t plus three, and then simplify it. So y equals five t plus what? Fifteen plus two. What's fifteen plus two? Seventeen. So my pair would be x or x equals t plus three, and y equals five t plus seventeen is a set of parametric equations that would get that rectangular one. Another way I could do it, I could pick anything I want for this first one. So let's say I pick t squared. Wouldn't I just take the t squared and put it in for x into that? Yes. All right, so there's three pair. We were only asked to do two. All right, that's it for today. That's it. So we still haven't done really any calculus. We just are still working with this parametric concept. Okay? We'll do calculus tomorrow. All right. Wait, I thought you said I would see like how it's like. Um, Ms. Ballard, she said that he still hates calculus, and Zach just said to brush his teeth. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. All right, I'm down. Oh yeah, he wants to know if uh, you miss him. Oh, I miss. Oh. Hey, tell him <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell him <laughs> and I miss him. Wait, wait, wait. Only if he loves calculus today that I miss him. Oh. All right. Where is he? Okay. All right. So your assignment is posted in Haiku. Hey, tell him 
you guys can go ahead and get started on it. I don't know. We don't have that many minutes left, though, right? Is it 48? Is that right? Okay, if you want something stamped, now's a good time to get that done.